Harry Payne is a songwriter, musician, producer, and founding member of Liverpool band The Stands, an outfit that released two timeless records back in the early 2000s, All Years Leaving and Horse Fabulous. He's recently released his second solo album entitled Mountain, an ace follow-up to 2009's exquisite Bright Light Ballads. As is customary in this series, we asked Harry to discuss a blues artist that is close to his heart. We explore the history around Lead Belly's early recordings, alongside a special live performance from Harry, his very own version of the Lead Belly classic, The Midnight Special. Harry Payne, welcome Hello, to the Blues Kitchen. Good to be here, How my friend. Doing? Good, good. Nice to welcome a friend to the show. <laughs> so, it's been a pretty busy year or so for you. Been on the road. Yeah. Stands reissues. Yeah. Brand new record. How's things been? Interesting, busy, and it's good. It's like, you know, doing the doing each thing is different, so doing the stands thing is kind of like, that's weird. It's kind of like going through a diary or something, or a photo album. Good weird? Yeah, good weird, but it's kind of like as you open it up and you see what clothes you're wearing or whatever, you, you remember all around it. And so when I was, because I remixed a lot of that stuff, so as I was pulling up and listening to the the mics in the studio, you're listening to conversations you had, jokes you told, you know, 15 years ago. That you're still, still telling. <laughs> you know, all the same things still happen. So it's kind of a bit like that. It's a bit strange. You're immediately back there, you know, like a, in a heartbeat, which is kind of weird. And so that led me on to the Bright Light Ballads re-release, which was a lot quicker and smoother, doing that one on vinyl, because we never did that on vinyl, despite, you know, going to great lengths to record it for vinyl, <laughs> like we just never put it on vinyl. For and that reason. was with Ethan John, Ethan, wasn't it? Yeah, Ethan John. Now, you're here with us this afternoon because you're going to play a Lead Belly tune yeah. in a moment. Um, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But I feel like we always find ourselves talking about the Deep South on Blue's Kitchen Radio and on this, on this YouTube stuff. And for a good reason, you know, most of the music that we play comes from that, that neck of the woods. But let's not bypass your hometown of Liverpool. For a moment, because in many ways, it's equally as important, if not more important, you know, arguably. The deep south of the northwest. Deep south of the northwest, very good. <laughs> but um, when you were growing up as a kid in Liverpool, what were your earliest musical memories? You know, my parents listened to. I mean, they've got good taste, man. You know, it's like especially my mum has got like a. She's like an encyclopedia, you know. I mean, she loves Frank Sinatra and Hoagie Carmichael and that sort of that sort of great American songbook stuff. Mm. She also loves Elvis and rock and roll. So that was that was what was happening in our house when I was growing up, you know. Uh, but my elder sister, she liked pop music, so she sort of introduced me to the pop music that was on TV and the radio when I was little, which was some good stuff, you know, because it was like. I guess it was like Madness and the specials. And and then she had a boyfriend who gave me a Kinks record. Uh, I think it was All Day and All of the Night. Yeah. On a 45. seven inch. Yeah, 45, yeah. He told me two things. I should have an Israeli Parker and I should listen to this record. <laughs> and I did both. And I became Im- immediately popular in school. Let's move on to yeah. Lead Belly. You're going to be playing this tune for us in just a moment. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to know the first way in which you heard... Because for me, I've got to be honest, it's covers. You know, it's Creedence yeah. or yeah. it's, you know, I found out ABBA did a cover of Pick a Bear the Cotton. You ever heard that? <laughs> I know they did On Top of All Smokey, didn't they? That folk song. Unbelievable. Well, I didn't know they did that. What was your first experience? Did you kind of climb your way in through a cover or were you immediately confronted with a Lead Belly record? Nirvana, the Unplugged Session. Yeah. I mean, I'd heard the name before because I, I liked Chicago blues and Detroit blues. That's really what I, when I started playing guitar, it was to do that, you know, it's like, that's what I like. And I found my way into that through all the regular sort of routes that someone like me would, you know, through Cream or through the Rolling Stones or whatever. And you find Muddy Waters and John Lee Hooker and those people, and then you keep going and it just keeps going, you know. Anyway, when I seen that cover of the Lead Belly tune that they did on the MTV thing or whatever it was. Where'd you sleep last night? Yeah, and it was the way he spoke about it that he tried to get hold of his guitar. He said something about he tried to get like somebody, like David Geffen or someone to buy the guitar for him. I just sort of humanized Lead Belly, you know, like this name that I just heard. And they heard a couple of bits after that. I didn't like it, 
very much, you know. It was like, it was, I was still like, eh, it wasn't like kind of immediately like being hit with a hammer or something and just like that. And then it just over time, I think I got into a few bits of it. But the reason is, is I feel like he's a bridge between the music that is the sort that we'd know as sort of Delta blues or, you know, or is it rural blues, I should say, really, and folk music. I feel like he, he sort of bridges that gap for me. You know, it's like, the, oh, okay, when I got into Lead Belly, he led me to Doc Boggs and to, you know, and to people like that and, you know, and Mississippi John Hare. And that's sort of, sort of the, you know, slightly folky, I think. Whereas the blues is like, you know, it is just the sound of somebody trying to survive, you know. And he was born in 1888. I thought you were going to say it? Liverpool. <laughs> born in 1888. I mean, that's bonkers in itself isn't it and yeah, yeah i think yeah. you know we talked about this on the show before ne never let the truth get in the way of a good story and <laughs> when you were born in 1888 and went now in here was this 2017 yeah he did loads of prison i think he went to prison like three or four times and you know i can't condone any of his behavior you know stabbing people and getting barbels and this kind of stuff but there is a romanticism to that and even though some of the songs like the one you're going to play isn't actually Lead Belly tune is it originally no. it's a tune that he yeah. heard supposedly in Angola prison I believe he picked it up in the prisons yeah I mean it's the the, the thing about Lead Belly that I find really fascinating is that like he sounds like he sounds like a nice guy with a bad temper in crazy <laughs> times yeah. do you know what I mean and he was Woody Guthrie's mate you know so I think that must Woody, have been doing he must like. have been alright you know but the fascinating thing for me is, is that like, yeah, he was in and out of prison. Every time he'd go in, he'd get out on good behaviour pretty quick, you know, like con considering what he'd done. You I know. think John Lomax actually got him out. That was the last he? time. Was that the last time? Yeah, and that was in Angola. And that's the fascinating bit that if he hadn't been done the last time, we'd never have heard of him because they found him in Angola prison because they were collecting prison songs. Yeah. And if we'd never have heard of him, you know, we'd never have heard... You know, the Midnight Special or whatever those songs are, because he, you know, who would have introduced us to them? And if we'd not been introduced to those songs, Lonnie, Lonnie Donegan would have not done them. And if Lonnie Donegan hadn't have done them, no skiffle, no skiffle, no, no Beatles, Beatles. no Beatles, no Stones, no Blues Kitchen. <laughs> so. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, of all the tunes you could have picked, mm. you're going to play for us The Midnight Special. And for any mm. particular reason? Well, I thought it's it's kind of the one that I like probably the best. Of Led Belly. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was that was a good enough reason. But it's it's an interesting song as well. It's like it it kind of it's what interests me about songs. It's like I love that Lead Belly was a songwriter. You know, I'm, I'm not really I'm I'm interested in songwriters because I write songs. You know, but uh, one of the things I also like is songs that just seem to survive without no one who's ever written them. Yeah. You know. And you just know that they've just been pushed through so many hands and that they've, you know, they've just become almost perfect. And they'll, they'll last probably forever, you know. And so this is one of those songs, The Midnight Special, because it's like you were saying, I think Led Belly got the credit for it maybe or something initially, but he didn't write it. It was just a prison song that he picked up, you know, that had been knocking about for years before. And so who knows where it came from, you know. Well, it's been wonderful chatting to you. Thanks, man. Without further ado, through some clever technology, we're going to cut over to you playing your version of Midnight Special. Ace, thanks, thanks Harry. Man. Thanks for making it. <laughs> Yonder come a Miss Rosie How in the world could you know well, I know her by her apron And the clothes she wore Umbrella on her shoulder A piece of paper in her hand She goes marching to the jailer Saying, let loose my man Let the midnight special Shine a light on me let the midnight special shine an ever-loving light on me When you wake up in the morning And that big bell ring 
You go marching to the table And see the same damn thing Knife and fork is on the table But there ain't nothing in the pain And if you say a word about it You're having trouble with a man Let the midnight special Shine a light on me Let the midnight special Shine a ever-loving light on me If you ever get to Houston Boy, you better walk right And you better not squabble And you better not fight Or some sheriff will arrest you And some judge will send you down Before you know a thing about it You'll be sugar land bound Let the midnight special Shine a light on me Let the midnight special Shine her ever loving light on me Let the midnight special Shine a light on me Let the midnight special Shine her ever loving light on me